This will be the last of this series of the LT Spice videos for beginners. In this video, we will go over using LT Spice to analyze a tone stack and understand how to use potentiometers a little more in our designs. With that being said, let's take a look at a potentiometer for a moment. In the last couple of videos in this series, we wired a potentiometer to be nothing more than a single variable resistor. While this is valuable in certain circuits, potentiometer is more often being used as a resistor divider, meaning we need to draw two resistors for a single potentiometer. As you can see here, we have a potentiometer which has three lugs. Lug number two is the wiper. Lug number one is where the potentiometer goes when you're turning it counterclockwise. And lug number three here is where your potentiometer goes when you're turning it clockwise. As the resistance between lugs one and two decrease by turning the potentiometer counterclockwise, also known as turning it down, the resistance between lugs two and three increase. If your dial goes from 0 to 10, when at 0, lugs 1 and 2 will have very little resistance, and lugs 2 and 3 will have the maximum resistance of the potentiometer. So if it's a 100k pot, 2 and 3 will have a 100k resistance, while lugs 1 and 2 will have almost no resistance whatsoever. As resistance between lugs 1 and 2 increase by turning the potentiometer clockwise, also known as turning it up, the resistance between lugs 2 and 3 decrease. As your dial goes from 0 to 10, at a 10, lugs 2 and 3 have very little resistance, and lugs 1 and 2 have the maximum resistance of the potentiometer. If the dial is at noon, you would get a 50% of the maximum resistance between lugs 1 and 2, and between 2 and 3. So if you had a 100k pot, for example, lugs 1 and 2 would have 50k resistance, and lugs 2 and 3 would have 50k resistance. Knowing this is important when analyzing a lot of tone stacks, so let's take a look at one. So here we have a Baxendall tone stack, named after PJ Baxendall, who had the design published back in 1952 in Wireless World magazine, now known as Electronics World. The original design article was titled, Negative Feedback Tone Control, Independent Variation of Bass and Trouble Without Switches, which demonstrated this symmetrically controlled tone stack. Nowadays, this has been adapted to op-amp ICs, which obviously didn't exist back in the early 50s. As this is an active tone stack, it will either cut or boost certain frequencies. The top half of the circuit right here is for the bass control, while the bottom half of the circuit right here is for the treble control, which plays with the negative feedback of this op-amp, creating our tone stack. So here we have two 100k potentiometers. I've set them up in LT Spice as two individual resistors, one to emulate the connections between lugs 1 and 2, and then one to emulate the connections between lug 2 and 3. I've set this potentiometer here to noon, as you can see I have 50k and 50k on either resistor, same down here on the bottom. However, what if we want to control the dial with only changing one value instead of two? In LT Spice, we can do this by creating a parameter. So up here we'll click on our param tool, and here we will type in dot param space pot1 space 100k, and then press OK. And we'll drop this wherever we feel like here. This is indicating we have a parameter for something we're going to call pot1, and we're going to set the value of this potentiometer that we're calling pot1 to 100k. Next, we create another parameter that we will call pot1 dev and this will be what our percentage is controlled by on how far we turn the potentiometer up and down to. So in this one, we're gonna type in dot param space pot one dev space 50. And then we're gonna press okay, and we'll put that right here. This is just indicating that we're gonna have something called a pot one dev, and we're gonna set it to 50%. The number is just relative. You'll see why the percentage is going to matter here in a moment. Next, we set the potentiometer's resistors to respond to this parameter. For lugs 1 and 2, we'll set the resistance value here from 50k to curly braces pot1 one minus pot1 one times pot1 one dev divided by 100, close curly braces, and then press OK. As for lugs 2 and 3, we're going to change the resistance from the hard-coded 50k to curly braces pot1 times 
pot one dev, divide by 100, close curly braces, and then press OK. So now we have our potentiometer set up. Right here we have it set to going at 50% or at noon. But if we wanted to say change the potentiometer to almost all the way full blast, if we right click on it, we can change that 50 to a 99 and then press OK. All right, so now we have the base potentiometer set close to max. Let's take a look at the signal that we're gonna get. First, let's make sure that our input signal is set correctly. Let's right click on that. Make sure that the functions are set to none and that the small signal AC analysis is set to one and then press OK. All right, so now we're gonna go to simulate and we're gonna go to edit simulation command. Let's go over to the AC analysis tab. Under type of sweep, let's set that to decade. Number of points, we'll set that to 101. Uh, for a start frequency, we'll set that to just 10 hertz. And for a stop frequency, we'll set that to about 20K. And then press OK. We'll put this down wherever. And then we will take a look at the signal. So if we go to simulate and then to run, and let's put our probe here at the very end of our circuit. And let's clean up the phase information here because that's not gonna be important for what we're doing. So right click on the right hand side, click on don't plot phase. And here we have our curve response or frequency response, having our base knob turned all the way up. You can see here that we got a lot of base, a little over 14 dB boost. And as it gets towards the higher frequencies, the boost starts to drop. So what if we want to see the full sweep of the potentiometer? If we comment out our pot one parameter with a semicolon by right clicking on it and then making sure your cursor is all the way over to the left and putting in a semicolon and then press OK. Now we can create a new parameter and we'll put in here dot step space param space pot one dev space one space 99 space 10 and then press OK. We'll put that right here. What this does is we'll now be able to step through this parameter, the pot one dev. Uh, we're gonna start at one and we're gonna end at 99 and go every 10 percentages. So now it will sweep the percentages of the knob being turned every 10%. Let's see what that looks like for the base control. If we go up here to simulate and then down to run, now you see bands for all those turns on the base control knob. So here you can see the whole spectrum of the base, where at a max base boost, we see the 15 dB being invoked, and at the full base cut, we're seeing a close to negative 15 dB cut, and then everything in the middle. As things get towards the higher frequencies, they pinch off and start to become more level. Now, if you wanna see more specific frequencies and what's being invoked, if you click here on the V output, this will create a window for the cursor. And if you click up on the simulation screen and start moving over left and right, you'll notice that the frequency will move left and right with it. And as you move across these bars here, you can actually see which frequency it's on. So right now it's riding the green frequency curve. If I wish for it to go up to the blue curve, if I hit the up arrow key, you can see now it's actually going to ride the blue curve. If I hit the up arrow again, it'll go to the red curve on this example. And as I keep hitting up, it'll keep moving through the actual sweeps of the potentiometer. So this is a way you can actually see not only the frequency at any given point, but the uh, amplitude or magnitude, I should say, of that frequency curve as well. And if you're looking for things like the phase information, that's also there, but that's outside of the scope of this video. But anyways, that is how you can observe a tone stack and see how it's going to perform simply by putting it into the LT Spice simulation. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed our little dive into LT Spice and that this gives you a chance to start learning about your own pedals and how they work and how you can mod them and just do this with a little bit more ease. In later circuit analysis videos, we'll probably be referencing LT Spice a bit and looking at how components affect certain parts of the circuit, which is a really handy thing to know when learning how to modify or troubleshoot your guitar pedal. If you like these kind of videos, 
press that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you wish to support the channel, please visit our web store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our PCB kits and components. That'll really help us out. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.